What's your most embarrassing harness racing moment? Actually, this goes back to uh, Windsor Raceway. Many years ago when I was driving, um, I had to rush, I was rushing to get to the, to the race in time and I went into, into the driver's room and I grabbed two boots and I put one, it turns out one boot was, was black and one boot was light brown and stood out like a sore thumb. And the announcer, Marty Adler, uh, noticed it on the track and he, he made sure everybody else saw it too. Oh, one time I went to a stake race and I forgot my colors. I had to borrow colors from another guy. I won the race, but I was very embarrassed to uh, wear them colors in the winter circle. Well, there's the, the boys play a lot of pranks. I remember when I first started racing, uh, I went to I went on the track and I was going out and my helmet wouldn't do up because they, they they just squeeze the things together, the uh, clips together, and then they, they keep taping. So I took it off and they, they whatever they were taping it and they they do like one tape and rip it and then another one. It was like it was like this thick, you know. It, was, it took me forever to get it off. I had to wear someone else's helmet. Actually, I think I wore Scotty's helmet here on. It. And his head's a little smaller than mine, I guess, and I couldn't really do the chin strap. I could just choke myself when I raced that day, so that was pretty funny. Oh my God. My helmet flew off in a race one time, and, and uh, I didn't live that one down for a long time. Well, a couple times they've messed with my goggles. I always put my goggles and leave them on my helmet, and they've turned them upside down, and then I never put them on until I get on the track, and then my goggles are upside down. So that's kind of embarrassing. That's happened to me a few times. Uh, well, it's kind of a funny story. There's uh, When I was driving matinee races, there's uh, down in Panette Raceway where I kind of started. They used to have a race every year called the Kilted Classic, where all the drivers wore kilts. And the first year I drove, I didn't really know that you're supposed to pin your kilts down so everybody could see my boxers the whole time. It was kind of embarrassing a little bit, but I shrugged it off. At a Christmas party, I wore for $750 a lady's dress, and I believe it was, and I, well, I won't say how big it is because that'd be embarrassing, and I don't know sizes, but it was very big. They had to use tongue ties to tie me up with it. Did you hit your 750 Yes, and it was posted, I think, on Stanford Canada, actually. <laughs> Embarrassing. Oh, I'm Anthony and Mark's brother. There's been lots that's embarrassing. I get pantsed about six times a week. Uh, I don't think there's a person at the track that hasn't seen me naked because of it. Uh, uh, other than that, I mean, I, I ran into Anthony one time post raid and got dumped out. That was embarrassing. Uh, there's there's hundreds. Uh. I had two horses in the same race one time. We were warming up at Windsor. We. We were warming up together and we hooked wheels in front of the grandstand and uh, 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 both of us went down. The horse didn't get loose, but we went down. Getting dumped off the cart up in Grand Prairie? There was a few. I uh, crashed four times in one day, I think it was. Crashed four <laughs> times? <laughs> Where did you do that? Right here in Northlands. Really? <laughs> Which day was that? I can't remember. It was a few years ago. <laughs> my one foot came out of the stirrup and then my other one fell and I slipped right through the bike. <laughs> that hurt the eagle that day. One of them is probably uh, uh, falling off the uh, jogger, warming up one time. Oh, definitely at Flambeau Downs when I fell off the race bike, and uh, Curtis McDonald put it on YouTube. Uh, it was funny when I did it, I was afraid I was on TV, and then uh, I drove the race, and I come back in, and I, t I said to James at McDonald, I said, was that on TV? And he said, totally. So then we, he got a hold of Curtis, and Curtis wasn't actually working that day. He got somebody there that was working, and they saw it put it on YouTube, and I think I'm over 6,000 hits now, so, but definitely that'd be the most embarrassing thing ever. post braiding one day or whatever, or going out, and I was joking around and looking back at the guy talking to me or whatever, and I got to where we turned to go on the track or whatever, and the, the wheel caught and I got flipped off the bike or whatever. That was pretty embarrassing. A bunch of people seen it and thought it was pretty funny too. <laughs> Greenwood days, I guess. It was probably my first lifetime drive. And you know, everybody's in you know, pumped up and well, I was nervous and excited at the same time, but was told not to get to the gate too early. And of course, I had to get there first, right? But he tried to duck under the gate and hit the track and bounce back up. But by then, the, you know, the rest of the field was a quarter mile in front of me. Uh, one of them was in uh, actually in the Hamiltonian. I was racing Armbro officer, and he was a balanced image, and of course, he had balanced image manners, and uh, he spun around going to the gate twice. And then the third time out, he left, and the, the race favorite, I forget who it was, made a break, and, and my horse got away and finished actually fifth in the race, and I felt like crawling under the table after that, but 
but I took the check. <laughs> I was racing a moose jaw one time in a date hole and I was just beginning to drive and I got a little too hasty and ran into the gate. Mary got loose on the island on me and went around the track a few times. And I tried to ride it out. It got pretty ugly. <laughs> okay, this is humiliating, but <laughs> my one drive at Greenwood, the horse ran away with me in post parade. <laughs> and so I had no drive at Greenwood in my life, but it probably made me a great deal of money as a trainer that that happened to me as a driver. So, I don't know, maybe the high point of my career. I dropped a line accidentally one time, and that was a little embarrassing. I caught it right away, and everything was fine, but I was a little embarrassed, and, you know, with that. Not a lot of people noticed, but I was more upset with myself, I guess. So. Uh, my most embarrassing moment was uh, when I first started driving. I was driving in a stakes final at Windsor, and I dropped a line at the head of the stretch. I don't think I was going to win the race, but I was going to be definitely top three, and that hindered me from finishing top three, and I was a little bit embarrassed at that point. Never done it since. I dropped the line one time in a race, so that was kind of uh, an embarrassing moment. I think I dropped the line maybe once or twice in a race coming down the lane. That's probably about it, though. I, don't know, I dropped my whip once uh, turning for home, and it probably cost me to win, so that was pretty embarrassing. I dropped my whip a couple of times, but one time it didn't feel so bad. I actually won the race doing it. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I've kind of messed up on, and I look back and I kind of laugh at myself about one of my most embarrassing moments was uh, when I was at Windsor and uh, I raced a horse in around the seventh or eighth race and uh, I was all done for the night so I went up to the driver's room and changed and was, I was heading out the gate and uh, the uh, fellow at the guard shack told me that I had one in the eleventh race and I, I was on my way home, I had no idea that I was in the race but uh, anyways because he stopped me I I made it back to the paddock to drive him, but uh, it was a little embarrassing not to know that I had another one in. Probably when uh, I thought I was done for the, I thought I was done for the day, and I got changed, and I still had one more drive in the and uh, I'd become sprinting back to the paddock. I remember one time where uh, we uh, had a horse that was, at that time, there were a lot of races selected for detention at Mohawk Racetrack and uh, I believe we had a horse in the first and second race and uh, I was only stabled across the track or across the road at Argyle Farms at the time from Mohawk and I figured once we had raced those two we'd uh, go home and get the retention horse and bring him in for the next night's races and somewhere along the way I got talking to people in the grandstand and and forgot all about it until about 5 to 11 and I couldn't couldn't get there and back in time. Uh, yeah, if you're not in at 11 o'clock, you're scratched. And having to explain to an owner that that we're five minutes from the track and and uh, that I couldn't get his horse to attention was pretty embarrassing. I would say probably one of my most embarrassing moments is actually Breeders' Crown related, and it was no it was no fault of mine, but I was ultimately responsible. Was Cactus Creek missing the Breeders' Crown because he was scratched. He was in the retention barn and the groom wasn't there to take him out of retention barn to put him in his paddock stall. He got scratched out of the elimination. So that was a, I was so mad that that happened and that groom did not get that horse out of there. And of course I was mad at myself because I wasn't there to get it done. I was doing other things with the other horses we had in that night that I got in my car and I left and I went home and Irv Miller, I was working for Irv at the time, Irv said, don't worry about it, it's, you know, it's done, don't, don't go home. I said, no, I'm going home. I said, I'm so mad, I'm leaving. So I went home and that's the night that Shark Gesture fell down in his elimination. So I didn't even know it happened until the next day. When I woke up and I got on the computer, I knew the horse had fallen down. So, you know, and then of course, you know, the, the story is remarkable how the horse came back to win the final uh, that next week. So, you know, that was probably one of the most embarrassing moments is to have that horse in the paddock, yet have him scratched because he was right two stalls away from where he needed to be and the groom wasn't there to take him out of retention. I've made a few bad claims that uh, are probably pretty embarrassing, but uh, thankfully I've made enough good ones to make up for them. I think probably one of my most embarrassing moments was Actually, it was close to when I first started out announcing. I was filling in at Hanover one night, and there was a trainer. His name was Larry Kelleher, and he had he had two mares that raced in the same class. One was named Seashell, I believe, and one was, I can't remember the other mare's name. But anyway, they came out on post parade, and I called the mare her proper name. And then when the race went, the whole race I called her Seashell, 
because they both raced in about the same class. They both kind of raced from off the pace the same way. So then the whole race, I called her Seashell. Seashell. She won the race. And then when she came back to the winner's circle and I looked at the program, it was the other mare. So I didn't know. I only called her right on the post parade and then the winner's circle. I never called her once during the whole race. Well, for me, probably a couple of times in, in announcing. I've uh, One time I called the wrong race for a half a mile before I realized I was calling the wrong race. I eventually clued in. I flipped the page back and realized, okay, no, this is race four, not race five. And another time I, I left my microphone on and I uh, miscalled the winner and I said an expletive that uh, came out over the air. I have to say probably an, one embarrassing moment would be just uh, one time I thought I won a, won a race driving the horse and uh, made it halfway back to the winner's circle and uh, for the starter to tell me that uh, it wasn't true I guess. And for a guy that doesn't drive a lot I guess it was kind of an embarrassing moment. Most embarrassing. Oh, I think I cried when we won the Battle of Waterloo. I don't know if that was embarrassing or not, but uh, I'm going to go with that one. I raced one night at a mile and a, a, mile and a half race. And I was cutting it out and nobody pulled on me or nobody pulled on me or anything. And then when I turned after the mile, they all come at me. I wondered what they were doing. <laughs> Didn't realize we had still had another half to go. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I cannot park again. I uh, I had had my license. I'd driven about, I'm going to say, 10 or 12 races. And Mark had won his first two races. And, and every time I went on the track, he made sure that I remembered that fact. So uh, I, I was gone like 0 for 12. There was no end in sight. And I was driving uh, this little two-year-old Kentucky Spur Colt. And uh, I'll never forget it because I, I thought he had a shot. You know, he's fast, but you never know, you know. His name is Art Lute Hanover. And uh, I'll never forget it. I went up to pick the lines up, and he had an open bridle on. You know, I was happy to drive him, so I certainly wasn't questioning anybody. So I got on and drove the horse. Sure enough, I had them by like eight, halfway around the last turn. I was greatest feeling in the world. And I cannot park the far turn. There was no fence there. It was wide open. And little Art Lute knew that, and he went off the track going a hundred and skidded up to the wall of the paddock. I was never so embarrassed and angry in my life. There was a little old lady again telling me I sucked, I think. I can't remember, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too pleased. It took me, only took me about another 45 races to get a win. God, I can't really think of anything. You know, I've gone into the wrong post position a couple times behind the gate. <laughs> One time it caused a recall. That was a little embarrassing. Geez, there's probably a few, and there a lot of other guys that probably uh, have something to say for me on this one, but I believe I've been parked every step from the rail once before, so that was probably pretty embarrassing. My most embarrassing harm is I left on the rail one night and I got parked back home. I was pretty embarrassed, <laughs> believe me. Oh yeah, one of my first drives in the United States at Freehold, I had a long shot, and uh, it was a new horse I had, I was pretty sure he could win. It was February, it was dead cold, I had the rail and I let somebody go and no one knew who I was and I pulled to go to the lead I never made it. So you could say I got parked from the rail but we, uh, we did make the winner's circle so it wasn't, you know, once I got by the wire in front I wasn't so embarrassed. <laughs> okay, the hard, uh, uh, it is embarrassing but it's been the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with is sitting the two hole in the North American Cup with Michael's power. He's won 90% of his races, and in every interview I get, it's what happened in the North American Cup, and, and that was the toughest loss for me uh, that day. It was hard to deal with. I win a heat of the North American Cup with Ship Scorch. Goalie Jeff followed me. Uh, we towed him all the way to the wire. Come to the final for, I have no explanation today, but he just wasn't the same horse. And, you know, he wasn't odds on favorite to win, but he was one of the favorites. And I mean, he just stopped coming for home and boy, oh boy, that hurts. <laughs> I think by getting caught in with Doombag in the uh, Little Brown Jug uh, rates rate up there, at the time I wasn't that really that embarrassed, but each time I played the replay over with and thought, uh, thought that if I had moved him to the outer flow that I would have probably won the race and uh, maybe changed history a little bit. So for me, that was probably the most embarrassing. There's uh, one guy in, in Meadowlands that uh, I drove a horse for and 
and uh, I didn't drive very good. Matter of fact, I drove terrible. And after the race, I, you know, I apologized to him. We didn't get any money, and I apologized to him. I said, you know, we, your horse raced great. He should have, he should have got money. And he said, uh, well, it's not your fault. And I said, well, how do you figure that? He said, well, I'm the idiot that listed you to drive. When I finished last the other night, <laughs> I haven't got too many, you know, and. Uh, I've been embarrassed before and I'll be embarrassed again and you know, you just get up, you get the dust off and you go on.